Hey guys, it's Carl here at Rare Candy, and today uh, we're going to be filming this meta forecast for the upcoming Atlantic City Regional Championship. It's going to be taking place next week, uh, the week of the weekend of September 28th, I believe. And joining with me today is three three guests that um, you know. I got a really nice mix here of these three guests who kind of come from different backgrounds, play in different areas of the country and uh, showed a lot of interest in being on this video with me today. They all have just so many accomplishments. They all write for different websites. They all represent different teams. And they have a lot to say and share about um, where we are in the metagame so far, coming off of Worlds, coming off of the regionals across the pond, that kind of stuff. So first, first guest I want to introduce is Hunter Butler. Hunter has so many credentials, it's just impossible to pick the best one. But I'd say his most recent one is top eight at NEIC of this past season with Spiritomb. Uh, people might know him from that. Outside of that, he um, has just a lot of a lot of top sixteen, top eight finishes, and he top eighted uh, top sixteen worlds last year as well. So I have Hunter here. He's from Florida. Next, I have Cody Graham. He uh, <laughs> well, he beat me on the way to top sixteen last year uh, at NAIC, which was kind of how we met. He writes for Team Rocket's Hideout, and um, he's really helpful. He gets around a lot. He plays a lot, a lot of local cups uh, over in Denver. And, um, yeah, so he's just kind of just kind of breaking into this kind of stuff, but really happy to have him. He has a lot of def definitely very interesting opinions about the game. And then, last but not least, John Eng. I don't know if John really needs an introduction, but I'm going to throw him one anyway. Uh, John got top 16 in North America last year. He also writes for six prizes. We're going to go into more of that a little bit later on toward the end of the video. Um, John is definitely some somebody that we've all seen and heard from many times, and I'm just excited to have everybody on. So, uh, guys, how are we doing today? Pretty good. Great. <laughs> you guys ready, Fantastic. ready to talk about this uh, tag team meta we got here or what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there a roulette meta? The roulette, the, yeah. the welder meta? Yeah, <laughs> the welder meta is honestly that's I've never heard that, but that's probably the best description of our meta right now. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's about finding what Pokemon you want to apply welder to, and then try to outrace your opponent. Right? Like, do you guys do you guys feel like welder is like the most busted card right that we have right now? Like, what are thousand percent? Yeah, one hundred percent. Literally put that on a post-it to be the first thing that I talked about. You did. <laughs> you did research for me. That's really that's really sweet. So, Welder, right? Has there ever been a card like Welder? What, what is what is good about Welder and what is bad about Welder? If we can go around and, and answer that one. Should we start with good or good. bad? Uh, it's really good. <laughs> That's good. Welder's pretty good. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's draw power in a format where there's already a lot of it. Uh... It's energy acceleration in a format where there's not a lot of it. And fire types are really good right now. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, um, do that in the past, like, really good without Furnace coming out at basically the same time. But between the two, um, you, you thin two cards out of your deck and draw th three and attach two extra for turn. So that's like ex extremely good, and without without furnace, it wouldn't be as good. But Definitely it's... not. I've I've played since 2007, and I don't know of any knowledge of there was ever a card that said attach energy and draw cards. I don't think that's ever happened. <laughs> the closest thing we had to that was blacksmith, and it had to be one from your discard pile, and you drew no cards, and it had to be to a fire Pokemon. So it had all these. Uh, uh, like constituents that you had to have to attach the energy and n not only that you had to get rid of it from the discard pile now we're just like oh if I have two fires in my hand I can draw three cards and I can attach it to whatever I want so it kind of like <laughs> the need for double colorless in any of these decks like Mewtwo or or what what have you and like like Cody said with the uh, with the uh, furnace you just have so much support we have fiery flint fire crystal giant furnace like it's like they took everything that they liked for dark and lightning and we're just like oh let's just turn it up a bit let's just give them a stadium that's twice better than viridian and then we'll give them a card that gets three energy out of their discard pile and put it in their hand and oh you know what they need a card that lets them <laughs> attach to three, draw three cards. <laughs> what, that's what, we need. what do you guys think 
this says about the game. Like, you just said that 10 years ago that there, this card is pretty much three other powerful cards put into one. What do you guys yes. think this, like, means for the game? What does it say about the game? Like, how are you, how are you feeling about it now compared to then? They like well, Charizard a lot more. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, so aside from the point that it just makes those cards better, I think what Pokemon was trying to do is, like, if you think about it, the three, like, big guys right now are Pikachu and Zekrom, like, focus on Pikachu. Pikachu. You and Mewtwo, focus on Mewtwo. <laughs> and then Reshiram and Charizard, focus on Charizard. Focus on Charizard. Those are, like, three pretty, like, poster boy Pokemon right there, like, the main dudes that people think about when they think about Pokemon. So I really think that Pokemon was just trying to, like, make their main dudes that everyone knows and loves just good. So to like attract people thousand percent agree yeah i could definitely see the marketing behind that easily which is i mean it's sad because like i don't know i i kind of like where the game is at right now i don't want to like i'm not like a hundred percent with it but like i kind of enjoy it um i'm just kind of you know like a new set will come out like in august and everything's like really hype and stuff like that and now i'm at the point where i'm just like well like it's got to be one of these three things you know and that's kind of yeah it's kind of a kind of a bummer, but I just wanted to see what you guys thought about Welder because I think pretty much everybody knows by now that if your deck doesn't have Welder, or like uh, you know Tapu Koko Prism or something, that it's going to be really hard to to hang in there and be able to do what you want to do. So anyway, um, the first deck I want to talk about, speaking of Koko Prism, is Pikaram. Uh, Pikaram's a deck that I've seen get like a lot of hate lately. Um, I don't know what happened, but it al almost seems like people think it's just not as good anymore. And I kind of wanted to hear your thoughts about it, and particularly the uh, optimal supporter line to play with it, because I think I've heard of every single supporter under the sun to be played with uh, in Pikaram. So why don't we start with you, Cody? Um, so I definitely think the Judge one is the best. Uh, as far as supporters, I would say for Volkner, for Judge seems like a standout the best but um as far as people thinking it's it's bad i don't think it's that they think it's bad i think it's just that it's too established and at this point there's not a lot of creativity that goes into it um and once that kind of comes down i feel like people don't think as highly of people playing it because you didn't have to put any thought into putting the deck together mm -hmm. i guess but i think it's good i think it's definitely top um, which uh, speaks a lot to the volume of decks that are good, but um, it's definitely top five. I would even say top three, but... Okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. What about you, John? Um, I, for, for the most part, agree. Uh, I think that the Judge version is the best version, because you, like, against, like I said, like, the Welder decks, like Reshiram and all that stuff, you need to be able to disrupt them. If you let them sit with, like, bajillion card hands, that's exactly how you lose the game. But it's kind of like a double-edged sword, because Judge can also hurt you, which is why, like, as, like, a Picaron player, I enjoy playing, like, uh, the Cynthia and Volkner version more. Mm -hmm. But, like, in, in, like, this meta, I feel like with... Mewtwo and Resh Re uh, Ability Reshi being so big, like the two front runners at this point, I think you. I think you need to play Judge to disrupt them because that's really powerful. Okay, what about you, Hunter? I'm gonna go ahead and well, not disagree with uh, John here because I do like that. I prefer the Cynthia and the Volkner over the Judge. Um, the reason being. Uh, the one that I've gotten screwed by the Judge so much. I don't know if that's just me or I think we all have. <laughs> I'll I'll full send judge, and then my opponent has three Cherish Ball, three Dedenne, four Acro Bike. <laughs> All they gotta get is some out to Dedenne, and then the judge just goes down the drain. At least from my experience. I do like the Cynthia Volkner. I think it's more consistent. I also like the order pads. So I like the four order pad, four Volkner, four Cynthia. I just wanna be able to get to Raichu as quick enough. I feel like Pika is like. At Pikachu, Zekrom as a deck right now, I feel like the only reason it's in consideration of a top three or a top five is due to consistency only. I don't think you have any positive matchup to any of the Welder decks unless you set up. I don't even think killing their... I think killing their hand is good, obviously. I don't think it's as good as setting up Raichu and actually being able to deal with an attacker. Most of these decks, like Mewtwo, have Tag Purge or like Restoram and Charizard, have the non-GX attackers, and now they have the Baby Blacephalon as another one. So now they're you're losing three prizes to their one prize, 
and I feel like it's not very beneficial. I'm kind of on Catrone's thing. I don't know if any of you guys read his article about why he hates Picaram, <laughs> but I gave it a read, and I actually think it's so true. I don't think there's anything that Picaram really gives to the format other than a deck that people can pick up, not test, know that it's going to run, and hope that you just oversteam your opponent. You're never yeah. going to be able to outthink your opponent playing Picaram. You're going to go full blitz, and you're going to attach to your attacker, and there it is. You know, they know where your energy is. They know what they have to take out. They know their six prizes. It's not like you're doing anything special. All you're trying to do is rush your opponent. So for that reason, I'm not a big fan of Picaram, but I do like the order pads, the four Cynthia, and the four Volk. Yeah. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> for those of you who are, uh, want to read uh, Katron's article, it's on someone's PC. And yeah, I've kind of always thought that Picaram is a little bit linear too. Um, I've never really... I, I've just never really been a fan of the deck, so um, it's interesting that you brought up in that in your reply you brought up um, Ability Zard, obviously a Welder deck, uh, and then you talked about the Blacephalon, which kind of is like an uh, it's indicative of Reshi's growth from Worlds to now. And before Worlds, we all know that Ability Zard had like minimal hype. People just for whatever reason didn't think it was good. Because people no were hype. playing, people yeah. were playing eleven or twelve energy cards. They weren't playing enough energies, right? So then, uh, at Worlds, this limitless version comes out and it's incredibly good. And then even since then, we've seen it kind of, in some cases, remove Reshizard entirely and just be like a one prize fire deck. Um, so there's so many ways to play this ability Zard deck. What I would like to know is uh, which one is your preferred. And why, if you can go in, if you can go into a little bit of detail as to why. So I don't. I think we'll start with John. Okay. <laughs> so I don't really have like a super super defined opinion on which one I think is the best. Uh, I have played Ability Reshi to the past three cups. I have a top eight, a top eight, and then a bubble in ninth. So, and my list changed literally every single cup. But the most recent one I played is the one I think I like the most. Um, I played double Stealthy Hood to help against Mirror, so they can't use their Ninetales on important things. Like, Stealthy Hooding your own Ninetales is really good. It also has a tiny niche effect against uh, Malamar, because if you manage to get turn one on a Vulpix, they can't uh, use Distortion Door to put 10 on your Vulpix on their turn. And then, which means they can't do the 10 plus the 4 from Spell Tag to the Esper kill your Ninetales. It doesn't add up correctly. And, um... Yeah, so I think the deck should be playing Stealthy Hood. But I saw that, who was it, Danny and Zach posted lists that just didn't include Reshizard entirely. I haven't tested that, but it makes a lot of sense. Like, some of the times I haven't even been using Reshi in my games. Uh, so I think going heavy on the one-prize attackers is really good. Um, I don't really know how I feel about Baby Blown. Like, I played it in one of my lists, but it kind of, like, it, the list wasn't really built for it exactly because it didn't, it didn't have maxed out Fire Crystals and all that stuff. But it always felt like whenever I could use it, I'd have like I need like six energies to take to knock out. I'd have five in my hand and a Dedene, and then I'd have to like re Dedene into like all of the cards to like Ooh. get the thing for Baby Blown. So like with Baby Blown, it feels like most of the time you have like ninety percent of what you need, and then you're like, well, I need to discard all of this to get the last piece, and then you have nothing. Yeah, so, that yeah. exact thing happened to me earlier today. I had five energies and I needed twenty more damage, and I was like, all right, I'm done with this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It just seems like it doesn't work out. Yeah. So, uh, Hunter, what do you think about like the evolution of, of Reshi lists and um, the best way to play the deck? Um, I also don't know the best way to play it. I haven't played any games with the non-GX one, although I do think that it's it's probably pretty strong in Mirror, uh, which is obviously 50% of the damn format <laughs> at this point, is, is abilities <laughs> are in Mirror. So switching them, those guys switching over to non-GX definitely makes sense. I'm in the middle with the uh, 15 energy and 3 crystal. That's what I'm at right now. I'm liking that. I'm thinking about trying the 14 and 4, but I've been liking the 15 and 3. It's like a nice medium. I agree with John. The Blown is something that you really have to set up. I think it's more of like a very, very late game attacker when you've kind of like filtered through your Dedenes and you have like maybe one or two welders left and you've used Victini and you have a million fires in your deck. Like, that's kind of the time you want to use it. Obviously, that doesn't come up perfectly every time. So use it when you can. But ideally, you want to use it towards the end. Um, I like the Stealthy Hood idea. That definitely, that definitely seems interesting. Ninetales is a 
huge problem in Mirror. Whoever sets up their Nine Tails first, I think, yeah. pretty much gets free reign of, oh, I want to kill that, I want to kill that, I want to take your Dedene, mm -hmm. I want to get damage on your Reshizard, boom, boom, boom. Uh, I don't know if the non GX versions have had enough time to like fully realize what the correct line of their attackers are. I'm a little wary of the double Turtonator. I feel like it's hard to get a lot of back to back KOs with Turtonator when you're removing energy and they're knocking you out and you're only getting three into play. So I feel like you you almost have to play at least one Reshizard or maybe another type of maybe a second Heatran or or some type of attacker that's gonna keep energy on board. Because Blown is obviously going to get knocked out. It's 120 HP. It's it's mm -hmm. uh, small, and Turtonators are 110. They're also small, and you're removing the energies when you're using the attack. So just because I don't have any uh, games with the non GX version, I don't know exactly how good it is. It seems very good in Mirror though. So I, I think the definitive way to play it right now is probably to still keep Reshizard in there. Having a, being able to do the 300 attack is just I feel like too good to pass out. Yeah. Yeah, it's also one more thing about Stealthy Hood that I totally forgot to mention, which is like the main reason it's in the deck. Uh, if you put it on McTeeny, you can attack with it when they have Walkman yeah, on their that's wrist, huge. which is huge. In oh, that's actually huge. Yeah, that's so huge. <laughs> it's actually the main reason I put it in the deck, and the two in the deck, and then I just like forgot to mention it. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. Um, Cody, do you have any thoughts? Um, so I actually really don't like the deck a lot. Uh, I know that's not a popular opinion at all. I, I, I do think that you should pick between uh, playing heavy basics versus like um, just playing the Turtonator and the Big Teeny. After Tord's list was out, I tried to pick up uh, Baby Bliss Cephalon again um, from last s s s s s spring, um, which I think is actually okay if you're playing Salazzles to draw. Um, you play a Turtonator, so you don't have to get, um, you don't get, like, <laughs> prized out. Um, you play the Victini still, and, like, that's okay. But it's just a lot of things to try to put together. Um, I would say the GX one is better. Mm -hmm. uh, in my list, I wasn't even playing um, G GXs at all. I didn't even play the Denes. Wow. So, Interesting. Just... Lazzles. Yeah. Pokecom, trying to draw a lot. Um, it was okay. It's definitely not good. Um, definitely won't be playing it. <laughs> at uh, I'm, it is, I'm not surprised. Uh, uh, it, not yeah. Good. All right. Well, it, you know, points for trying. To, yeah. To <laughs> be, be honest, I also don't like any of the other ones, so I won't be playing those either. Your deck will not have a fire energy? It it will, uh, yeah, it will. I think but, uh, it will I think eighty percent of decks in Atlantic City will have a fire energy. Uh, ten percent will have a psychic energy, and ten percent will have a water energy, and that is probably how that will go. Well, what water. happened to lightning energy, dude? <laughs> yeah, I think oh, you gotta give my bad. At least five. Ten percent. <laughs> wait, ten percent will have a a, a lightning. Two now. Or... <laughs> I don't know. We'll go over those ratios at a later date. Anyway, um, so this week on uh, Hey Fonte and stuff like that, we uh, I, I think for whatever reason I, that I haven't been able to define yet, Malamar started getting a lot of hype. And I think that a lot of that is because of Grant um, yeah. playing it a lot over the past three weeks, doing very well at Cups. I don't think he's finished below second. Uh, and it pains me to say that because I know Grant will uh, love to hear that he was... Uh, mentioned in the video but anyway uh, <laughs> um so malamar kind of in the beginning of the week was like on an upward trend right like maybe it's not a bad deck maybe it is i think it's i don't think it's very good um i want to know how you guys feel about malamar um I, I mean i feel like at this point there's just one build with cross division and then just you know jirachis and tina spam and stuff like that esper um so we'll start with you um hunter what do you? How do you feel about Malamar? All right, so I have never ever in my whole life liked Malamar. <laughs> Not okay. one time. Welcome to the club. Last year I didn't like. Even when you could go like Nest Ball, Nest Ball, Treasure, Let Loose, I still didn't like Malamar. I felt like it was an uh, underwhelming deck. That if you snipe, obviously with Guzma, you could just take out their Malamars, and 
you are a halfway decent player, you should probably be able to beat most Malamars. Um, I didn't originally like it in the beginning of this format, but my testing partner and uh, team captain Finnegan Lynch will never put the deck down. Right. He thinks it's incredibly good. He doesn't care what, what and, and he's playing zero tag in his list right now. Zero spell tag. And yeah, none. Yeah, he no, thinks the card is not worth. I'm not gonna lie. I've lost some games playing Ability Rushy with no tags. I'm not. I'm Whoa. Not, like, not like that. Uh, but I think my real uh, likeness for the deck has come from Igor playing it. Igor plays it at most of the cups and challenges. He plays uh, two Mimic U and Espioxis and Acrobikes, and I really like his list and uh, how you can just basically win in two attacks due to the tag team format. You. Let a Tina die with a tag. Doesn't even matter if you attack with it as long as it dies. Put 40 on the, the Zard, 230 it with Mimikyu, and then you take your three other prizes with Espioxus. So I, I actually don't think the deck is awful. I definitely don't think it's consistent. I think a lot of people like Grant would like to say that, oh, it's really good. And like having cards like Power Plant in your deck that really don't like advance anything like drawing wise, which is the whole problem the deck has is setting up. Power Plant doesn't you know, advance that, uh, cards like Adventure Bag that people are playing in their list. I think people are getting towards, like, the best uh, list. Like, I think Igor's list is probably the best one that I've seen so far. Uh, I do think it's a good deck. I don't think it's consistent. I think it's way better in best of one, which is why Grant is having success with it, is because you go first. If you get to go first in best of one and get two NKs down, you're probably going to be all right against... Uh, uh, other decks because they're not going to have enough time to deal with your six Giratinas or, or what have you. So I think it will see a marginal amount of success. I would say like two or three in day two, even though this is probably going to be another Philly regional with like 1,100 people or whatever. I'm still thinking three, maybe max four Melmar in day two. Okay, great. Um, yeah, that was a really that was a really good response. I'm expecting to see a little bit as well. Uh, Cody, what do you think about the deck? I agree with all of that. That was so good, uh, right? <laughs> tested. Um, just trying to figure out some cards for everything, and I feel like I feel like it's a it's like a a very good theme deck. Um, <laughs> I don't think there's anything special about it. I definitely won't be playing it in a best of three ever. Um, I have basically no confidence in it. I really don't have a lot of good things to say about it. I do. I do think uh, it is. It is the deck that keeps other single prize decks out of being viable. That is one thing I will say. But I don't think that that's a good thing. So it's a horrible that's thing. Enough on. So. It's horrible. It's just. Yeah. I, I felt that today when I was building and playing around with Don Fan. I'm like Don Fan could be cool. And then the be. first two matchmaking uh, ladder games are. He starts with NK, and I'm like, dude, I, come on, man. Ah. To add, to add to what uh, Cod said that I forgot to say, one of the best players in the world took four ties in Europe with the deck. <laughs> Yo, guys, all of my points. These are the things I was going to say. Like, <laughs> if, things to talk and, about. and he said, he said, oh, you know, if I played a little faster, like, I'm, I think he's selling himself a little short. I think he probably played at a moderate pace, and his deck did Stephane, not move fast. Enough. Stephane plays fast, so if he's talking about he has to go faster, like other people just shouldn't even bother. <laughs> he, if he would have played a little bit faster, he would have gone five one three instead of four one four, <laughs> right? Um, Maybe. John, do you have anything to add? It's okay if you don't, but. I just, they, they took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. I think one thing to note about the deck is, like, okay, to preface, preface this, I have never played Malamar to a tournament. I have never been a huge fan of it. I, ha I however, now, like, recently have a newfound respect for it. Because if you've noticed, like, the players that have been kind of, like, the like the face of Malamar recently, it's Igor, Grant, and then, I guess, Stefan now. At least in, in, like, the modern version that we have of Malamar right, right. now. And those are all really, like, really good players. And I think Malamar to play uh, like has a really high skill ceiling with like all your damage oh, placement yeah. and stuff like that oh, yeah. because like the end game SB Oxus is ninety nine percent of the time just like how you're winning the game. So I think number one to just play Malamar at the highest level to make it worth being played, you need to have a lot of experience with it and like need to be like insanely good, which isn't to discourage people from playing it. It just means you need to practice it like a lot. So like I guess that's what I'm trying to get at here with Malamar. But like yeah, I just don't think it's a best of three deck. 
I think the hype around it is because just like every all we've had are cups and challenges right now, except of course like Stefan in Europe, but he went five oh four, so that could have gone south very quickly. Yeah. I don't even know. Five did he have ties in day two? One. He had one in day two. Okay, so he had five ties over the course of fourteen rounds, which I mean, is, it's not unheard of. But that's one third I think of your turn. Are, that's Ross Cawthon ties right there. <laughs> yeah. Five ties, dude. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like we've set a lot of consensus there, which is not something we've really been able to do yet. So that's that's good. Um, if you're watching this video <laughs> and you don't have probably, I'd say a couple hundred games in with Malamar, I'd probably leave the leave the Squid Boys at home for this one. Yeah. Um, so a couple weeks ago, we had a, uh, the Charizard GX get released in Hidden Fates, and then we had a regional, and then we really didn't see any Jesse and James. Real like not a whole lot. I think there was a one. I think there was a, there was yeah, one Fab, and Fabian in top eight, right? He didn't play Jesse and James in his list he though. Because he played a third Mars, Mars which, which is broke. better. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because like middle game with Pidgeotto, like you or like in the early game, you don't really have like the two cards yourself to get rid of when you're trying to set up. Okay. If that makes any sense with the Jesse and okay. James. So we'll just fix it on the Charizard then. So obviously Mewtwo gets the Charizard. Uh, that can GX for four energies um, for 300. Do you guys think that this makes Mewtwo the best deck in the game? Or, like, how does it influence the deck that won Worlds? Like, or anything else that you have to add to Mewtwo that you've tried out uh, going forward? So we'll start with Cody. Um, I've been playing the deck quite a bit. Um, it's currently one of my top few picks. Uh, I think the Charizard is extremely good, but I don't think that's a surprise to anybody at all. Um, I think it gives you a, a two attacking um, strategy to be basically all tag team decks because you can turn two 300 and then turn three 300 if they put down two tag teams. Um, all you have to do is hit your catchers and you're there. Um, I think Charizard is extremely good and I think it would be crazy to take it out. Yeah. If that's something anyone is thinking about. Okay. Don't take it out. Don't take it out. <laughs> Don't. Uh, Hunter, how do you, what do you think about Mewtwo as a whole? Uh, I like Mewtwo. Mewtwo is really versatile. I think this is the only solid box deck. I think Ability Reshi is kind of a boxy deck, but I think Mewtwo is the best boxy deck that we have currently. Uh, Latios is super strong. I know a lot of people are getting, like Rahul are getting, and Azul are getting creative with their tech slots, such as like the Mewtwo that puts the supporter back on top, the Giratina, things like that. The only thing I don't agree that's going on with all these lists is they're cutting Reshiram and Charizard, and I think that really, really makes you struggle against any deck that plays one Keldeo GX. You really don't have an answer anymore, uh, and I think that's rough. I think people should be playing the Reshiram and Charizard and the new Charizard. Uh, I think both are still have... I mean, obviously, the Charizard GX got to have that, but the Reshiram and Charizard still has merit. Um, SB, having access to Espioxus, Tag Purge... Reshiram and Charizard, Charizard GX, Venom Shot. Having you basically can sort of pick your prizes however your opponent decides to give them to you, which I think is always nice for a deck uh, when you're able to just say, "Well, I'm, I, my game plan only matters on what my opponent is doing," which is always great because yeah. you don't have to think of anything. Your opponent's thinking for you. <laughs> so I really, I really do like Mewtwo. Uh, probably won't play it though. I'm uh I'm pretty head over heels for Nag Quag right now, so I probably wouldn't play you too. But yeah, when we get to Nag Quag, I got a lot we're, to say. Yeah, about we're definitely. You just gave me some. You, yeah, we're gonna definitely coming back to that. Uh, <laughs> but for you too, I think it's a great deck. I think it's versatile. It's fast. It's consistent. Uh, I, something I've been trying is uh, Giovanni's Exile. Mm. I've been really liking that. Being able to get rid of the Dedenes on your bench and dead weight off your bench like a damage Mewtwo. Uh, it's been almost like using Mewtwo's GX attack and having another GX attack, so that's been great. So I've liked that. Isn't isn't that the card where you can't throw it out if it's damaged? Yeah. Though? Is it damaged? Oh, you, I don't know. That. You can throw damage cards away. Oh wow! Well, I have been messing that up. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten rid of plenty of Dedenne. See you, so buddy. We'll count that. Okay, so I feel like the main reason is for Dedenne here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It was, it was, the main reason was for getting the Denny's off my board. Yeah. Yeah. And useless useless cards like <laughs> Cabal GX. Yeah, right? Um, yeah, that card, no place in the deck. Do you still play that in there? 
Uh, it is cute, but it is not good. Cobalion? <laughs> Cobalion? Yeah. Yes. It stops the par- paralysis from Raichu, but if you're smart, you should be able to beat Pikachu very easily. Uh, I'll do 300, and then I'll tag Burge. Go ahead. <laughs> John, any so, uh, any last words, John, on uh, Mewtwo? No, I, I just I think it's probably one of the best two decks right now. It has like answers to everything, and it's... The only reason I just I'm not the biggest fan of it is because of just like you know the whole welder roulette thing we have going here because so many matchups are just going to be like oh you like did you get the welder uh, did I did we both get the welder and I just went first yeah like I don't think the comeback mechanic is uh, very like big right now especially because like Mewtwo isn't playing reset stamp ability Reshi is neglecting to play stamp the only deck that really like plays heavy counts of stamp or like at least two or more that I've seen like in like throughout the lists consistently that I've seen on the internet is like Picarom. And then we know how we feel about that one. So <laughs> and and I and that's a good point to bring up. I don't know why decks aren't choosing to just find a space for a reset stamp. I don't I don't it's, get it. I don't know why I the, haven't tried it, but yeah, I don't it's just the Dene, I think. I think that's it. It's just the Dedene. It's like they're saying, I just, they're really committing to the, I just hope that I just do welder better than my opponent. <laughs> right. yeah. Just going to weld more. Um, so, John, I want to stick with you here because you've been, I've been coming to you last for the past couple, and I feel like I just want a nice, long John Ang classic go off. Um, do you think that there is any room for, like, a stall deck of any kind to do well? In the current state we have, the only stall decks that I can think of since we've lost, like, nearly all of our healing cards and all of our, like, big beefy dudes is the Pidgeotto deck, I think. I I haven't really explored stall that much, but I I think that's all we've got right now. And per usual, I do think, like, the common, like, population of players at this tournament are not going to be ready for stall. Right. But that also comes with, like the downside of you really get hurt by Espioxis, especially the, the Pidgey deck specifically. And Malamar, which is a deck that's been gaining a lot of hype recently. So regardless of how we feel about it, it, uh, it, it at the tournament, there will be a lot, I think. And that deck naturally plays Espioxis and has like a, a, like a game plan that like works almost every single time against you. Mm-hmm. And then Mewtwo also plays Espioxis. So that deck, if, if not Malamar, like you have like w- at least like at least top two right there in Mewtwo being able to beat you pretty easily. So I just don't, I, I don't think the matchups are there right now, but I, I think that the general, like I said, the general population of players is just still not ready for stall and they never will be ready for stall. Yeah. Okay. Um, how about you, Hunter? Uh, I agree that Pidgeotto, it just gets absolutely destroyed by Espioxis and just, that having or having that at bay, I think, is enough to keep it away. I do think a lot of people have not experimented with the Sheninja Jesse James, which I think is the best deck that can take advantage of that. Do, do I think it's better than Pidgeotto? Probably not. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if someone was able to break it. Uh, as far as stall, maybe like Dylan Gunn's yeah, thing that's what I was th- uh, that he played. That's what I was thinking. It doesn't seem awful that Guardian won a regional. Uh, Malamar was your hardest matchup for that deck, so that being in the format is harder. But with Guardian being pretty big, uh, Ability Reshi being decently big, but now they have Terminator, so it's a little bit harder to get around. Uh, but I think Keldeo is just super strong right now. I don't think uh, I would be surprised if I saw one like Dylan Gunn-ish stall. I think it would be hard, and he would have to have a Tom would have to give you a good day. But I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I also don't think it's out of the realm of the possibility for a Pidgeotto to make day two either. I think that all depends on Tom, though. Interesting. Uh, Cody, do you have anything to add? Um, So I've only been playing in Denver since April, but Denver is full of people that love to play stall. Um, I'm so sorry. Yeah. there's, uh, There's a single stall deck played at any cup and we've had seven since points started for 2020 so um just based on that i am going to say that i don't expect to see a lot of stall i don't think stall is particularly good i'm not worried about stall personally um yeah i i just don't think it's a good time for stall right now i've been playing around a lot with keldeo and bronzong like the like dylan's deck from worlds 
and I think it's I think it's pretty good. The only reason why I asked is uh, because I was messing. I've been messing around with that for the past couple of days. I just wanted to see if if anybody brought it up because I know the go to standard is Pidgeotto. Um, right. But I do th I do actually think there is a hole for that Keldeo Bronzong deck. I, I do. Um, uh, and I forgot about Kika's list too. The Vaporeon healing thing doesn't seem awful. And I guess we forgot to talk about Poipol. Even though I oh. my team's thing, but <laughs> we. Uh, I think the secret. I think out. the list is kind of evolving into an attacking version now, where you're like, your whole game plan is now turned into a, a stinger and kill a tag team, which I think is a fine game plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see some play pool either. And Kika really likes the deck. Uh, I saw Isaiah Bradner. He wrote an article about it. The Celio's Network guy wrote an article about it. So I think there's a lot of people who probably li like the deck because. It's a new archetype. It's not something that a lot of people play, so people are drawn to that. But I, I think Poipol could do could do all right. The problem I, that I have with Poipol is that most people who are going to pick that deck up are inherently going to misplay very hard with it because it is hard. <laughs> it's it's tough. Yeah, as Poipol have pay for that long, like, like you're bound to screw up something eventually, yeah. which is a bad way of thinking about it. But like like you were you were just talking about um, people picking that up are the same as people trying to pick up like Tina. Takes. If you don't have a lot of games in, you're better off not picking it up. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I mean, I yeah. think. Have, I, I've literally never seen an article or read an article on Poipol or like, talked to anyone about the deck. Have people realized about the Lunatone Soul Rock thing yet? Is that? Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's in the deck. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, like, I've literally, I haven't like seen it on social media at all. I was just wondering if that was an established thing yet. Yeah, it's, it's something that we oversighted. When we were, because we all played the deck. I didn't play in Worlds, but they all played the deck for Worlds. We oversighted the uh, amount of Nine Tails that there was going to be. <laughs> yeah. We didn't obviously think there was going to be Nine Tails, so we we're like, "Oh, you have two catchers, cool. You can take two prizes, and then you'll never take a prize again." So like, <laughs> that was the thought behind the deck. This on it is also extremely good, and if anyone has any questions on it, like he talks about basically everything that you can think of to ask about. Um, and I think it's a free article. Don't quote me, but it's definitely worth looking at. Oh, and if it's not, it only costs 99 cents. Ooh, shameless <laughs> plug. Shameless <laughs> plug. I didn't alert for that. Uh, there's also quite a few articles on Cutter. There's Dashboard. tons, yeah. <laughs> Finn, Finn, a couple weeks ago, he's like, hey, do you want to test? And I'm like, yeah. And then he's like, okay, I'm going to play Infinity Stones, which is, which was the name Poipel. of the Poipel deck. <laughs> and, he's, and he instantly goes, I'm sorry. And I, I'm like, I just happened to be playing. Um, I was playing a deck with nine tails too, so it, I had a good time. So um, <laughs> anyway, I like that deck a lot. Actually, I think it's really creative and very neat. And uh, when I heard about it at the open, I was like, no, here we go again. You know, like you you start a new season and you think all that oppressive crap that beat you was is like in the past. And then like, obviously, when you have like six or eight of the smartest players in the game and some of the best deck builders who know, just know how sh things work together, uh, come up with something, yeah, you know you're in for a long year. So I can't wait to see that and uh, plenty more Pidgeotto coming up over the next couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I want to I wanna talk now about rogue decks, decks that we have not addressed yet that uh, might be flying under the radar. And I think I can't start anywhere else but with Hunter for this one. So, uh, Hunter, what are you what are you playing around with, my man? What's good? Okay, I have two decks. I don't think that is rogue. I think it's huge, huge increase on ladder. I don't know if anybody's been on ladder, but so many people are playing Nagquag on ladder. Um, and I really, I'm, I'm writing an article on the deck currently. I'll have it out before Atlantic City. But I really, really, really do like Nagquag, and here's why. Keldeo GX is so oppressive right now. There are not a lot of things that can deal with it outside of the Reshi, uh, ability Reshizard, and their attackers are all dying to a Quagsire attack. So 110, 120 HP, uh, Heatran takes two prizes, uh, Reshiram is three prizes, all for Quag, free, free knockouts. Um, I, I <laughs> uh, quote me on this, but I think Nag Quag is actually more consistent than Malamar at this point. I would not say that a year ago, but right <laughs> now I would, I would say that it's more consistent. Uh, easily to be built, and the reason I'm going to go ahead and leak what I'm playing. I'm playing uh, three Pokenavs, four Mysterious Treasure, 
and four uh, pre-communication and four acting. <laughs> so I've been, yes. PokéNav has been extremely amazing. I want to work around with it with Malamar as well because I think it's a card that's kind of underexplored that people don't really play. But it's super good in Quag when you have like 23 Pokémon and you're able to thin your deck with cards like Viridian and Mysterious Treasure and Pokécom and Acrobike. And you thin your deck out and then you can see an energy card or a Pokémon in your top three and then reset your deck. So there's been so many times where I'm like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and play a Nav. I got a Water Energy. I have no support in my hand, but I have a Lily in my top two. So now I can stack my Acrobike, get my Lily, and continue to play. Uh, yesterday, I played uh, seven games with Finn just for just for some testing. And six out of the seven, I ended my board with two Whoopers, two Poiples, and some type of Attacker or Ditto. Out of seven games, six I ended with that. Yeah, it was very good. I think the deck is super, super under-tested. Um, I'm trying a lot of things. I'm trying the Buzzmosa. I am trying the Espeon Deoxys. I am trying also an Esper in that build so that you can... I don't play catchers. I play no catchers. So you can use uh, Volcanium Prism Star, spread, use Mew, spread, hit something with Quag, don't kill it, spread, and then either take an Esper knockout and then Espeoxys or use Espeoxys to take all six of your prizes. So it's kind of turned into a spread deck for me at the moment, and I'm really, really liking it. Uh, so that's number one. And then number two, I've been messing around with Behem. I think I really liked Behem when I saw the card. Uh, it didn't have much success, but I found a list that Drew Allen and Josh Fernando played at the Open, and it played three Aerodactyl GX. Yeah. So I've been messing around with that. It's uh, four Judge and three Judge Whistle. So basically you have seven Judges, and you have Aerodactyl, and Alola Nine Tails, and uh, Zipstrika is your draw instead of Pidgeotto. And it gets, there's these situations against Picarab and Abilities are where basically you go Judge, item block them for 90, promote the Aerodactyl, and then your opponent can literally do nothing. They can't attack, they only play four supporters, all these decks play only four Welder, and they only play item cards to get them, or abilities to get them, like Dedene. So I think the format has kind of braced itself with these four supporter decks, that if you item lock them and kill their hand in a very crucial turn, their mm -hmm. whole deck just folds. And they really can't do much. And that's what's happened uh, kind of online in person testing with me or uh, with it for me, is uh, you don't really have to establish the lock too early. You can kind of let them take a couple prizes and then use the Aerodactyl to knock out their threat. I'm not playing any fighting energy. I'm playing two Karate Belt. So you can just attach your energy and use the GX. You don't even have to have, have an energy to attack. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> That was so. Listen, hold on. That's not messing around. Right that now. was so good. Yeah, I'm going tonight to do that. Like that's happening like after this, after dinner, dude. That is so. That was so good. Wow. Um, John, do you have anything that's kind of off the wall that you could uh, throw out there? Uh, not off the wall. I just want to say that I, I yes, I also really like Nagquag. Um, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, yeah, I really like it. I think it's got pretty good matchups against the big things. Uh, BHM really just could never get into it, at least, like, way back when it first got hyped before Worlds. The Worlds list, the, the initial, like, first list people were making, it was kind of one of those things where, like, after testing the matchups a couple of times, you were kind of just like, oh, I just need to stare at this deck, and eventually it'll just do nothing, <laughs> and I win. But uh, it's new information. See, this sounds very promising, so... I'll be looking out for that. Maybe people have learned to perfect BHM. Um, I guess we, have, we haven't really talked about Green's Reshizard, which I think is, although kind of been like pushed off to the side because to, due to its counterpart, Abilities Zard, I still think it's very strong. I think the lists from Worlds have or need to be updated to be able to beat Abilities Zard, and that is with Stealthy Hood, the Dojo, and the Fighting Energy. And I think that... Frankly, I, I I don't know if I'd go as far to say this, but it's definitely like up there for me in my potential plays because it's one of those things where it's like if I whiff turn one welder, I'm not complaining most of the time. Right. Nope. It have four more supporters in your deck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Cool. So I I do like to hear about that. I've been playing around with greens a little bit, and uh, while not a rogue, I think it's certainly slept on and definitely worth testing in the next eight days we have until the tournament so that's a great suggestion cody do you have anything that's kind of under the radar or not really too spoken about um well that's basically all i play is that stuff so uh i think spiritum's <laughs> pretty good and i've been trying to play it with a bunch of 
different things. Uh, Frostlass, Koopa, um, different counts of those. Basically, uh, Pidgeotto's, Zebstrika's, different ways to draw. I think it's a fun deck. Um, it's actually one of my top few picks also. Um, and Neg Quag is the other one, like what Hunter was talking about. Pokey Nav is cool. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Uh, but that's like one of the big decks in Denver 2 currently. Um, so I've been exposed to that a ton. And I don't think anyone's thought of that actually. So that's pretty sweet that uh, you thought of that. But uh, I'm definitely going to try that out now because it sounds way b b better than what we have. <laughs> uh, I know uh, a couple people are playing it in cups on Saturday. Um, so we'll see how they do. But that is also one of my, I would say, like top three or four picks currently. Um, Good. But that's basically it. There's there's not there's not a ton of uh, a ton of promising looking things to try out, uh, which has kind of led me to be boring in the decks that I've played at Cups, which has so far been exclusively Blacephalon. Um, which I think is very good. Um, I currently have all of my points from that deck, and it is also in my top few uh, picks, but it is probably towards the bottom of my top few, just because of things like Malamar and Keldeo being hyped up a bit. Those are very, very bad for lists. <laughs> yeah. To, uh, to add on Spirit Tomb, I played... Spirit Tomb at the open, and I went five one one in day one. I didn't show up to my first round day two because I overslept, and my lovely girlfriend did not set an alarm. And so I uh, threw away a free win to Greenzard at five one one. And I will say the deck has a very positive fire matchup. Besides uh, the Mewtwo, the Mewtwo is a little bit rougher because of the Espioxus. Um, there's really no good way to get around that. Um, the only win I've ever gotten over Mewtwo playing it in the cup was I basically skunked my opponent by making them use their Espioxus early for 10 instead of 20, and then I benched Ditto and evolved into Lolan Ninetales, and then their whole deck was locked out, so they couldn't do anything. And that was the only win I got, was by cheesing. Um, I, do think, I do think the deck, if you dodge Malamar, or if you play heavy Malamar counters, like, uh, for instance, my list plays two labs, the four catchers, and two Hoopas, and I had a Faba at one point, so I got rid of the Faba. But wow. I had plenty of counters in for Malmar. So I think if you could dodge Malmar and hit a bunch of fire, I don't think it's a horrible deck. I think Frostlass kind of carries you. Spear Tomb is an awful attacker in this format. I just think Espioxus is just really, really, yeah. really hard. Espioxus yeah. is definitely the, the bad thing. Um, Malmar, I actually don't even think it's that bad, personally. Like, you you up trade with, with your two Hoopas and... Hope your labs are good. Oh yeah, I in the in the open I played against three Malamars and I two owned all of them. I didn't lose the one Malamar with double lab, Faba, four catchers, and two. Uh, okay, Jeez. well then yeah, that's just the package to beat it. <laughs> well, you gotta. That's my worst matchup. I had to tag for it. Um, <laughs> damn, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of Malamar hate. Holy crap. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay, so I kind of want to end on on. Um, couple different notes here uh we did not talk about guardian it won the last regionals uh it's i've always had a soft spot for guardian even before worlds when i was trying to convince everyone that it was actually decent uh, no one would believe me um how do you guys feel about it now uh, i'm, I'm kind of lukewarm on it myself i don't i i tried pretty much everything to leverage reshi and i just i can't find something that's reliable and i just I want to know what you guys think about the deck going forward here. Uh, so we'll start with Cody. I think it's either very good or very bad, depending on what you're playing against. Um, I think the decks that you beat, you stop. And I think the decks that you can't beat, you might as well not even play a lot of the time. Um, the charms are extremely good. Uh, GX attack is extremely good. You can basically pick whatever cards out of your deck every turn that you feel like. You can typically attach three times a turn uh, for your first two or three turns. Um, but uh, the guy that got first, didn't he only play against like two charges? Total. Two, two in day two. Losses, 
two ties, yeah. right? He did not win. So and it can't it can't yeah. win, honestly. It really I think even a tie, like you had to do something to get that tie. That's an accomplishment to get yeah. a tie. One hundred percent. You had to play really, really I slow. I don't think you clarified if any of them were IDs. I think one was. Oh, one was okay. I think one was. Okay. I, I saw him post maybe a week and a half ago or something. I don't know. Um, okay, yeah. I mean, that's like generally that. generally my Honestly. opinion on on the deck too. Um, John, would you agree with all that? Yeah, here, hold on. I have a nickel in front of me right now, so I'm just going to flip it. Okay, Tails. I just hit a Reshizard, so I started out <laughs> 1 0 <a> 1. Okay. <laughs> Another Tails. I started out 0 2. 2. Got to make a run. Make a run, boys. Okay, that's ahead. So I, right. I hit a Pikaram. I'm 1 2. Post it on Twitter. <laughs> make it a run. And another tails. I'm out of okay, day two. Done. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> Dang. Okay. That actually feels very familiar and sad to me. Um, Hunter, <laughs> do you have? Do you also have a experimental trial here, or do you have any uh, any of your own? Thoughts? Uh, yeah. If you're in Europe, you can play Guardian. If you're in America, no, no, no way. You can play Us Americans like, love our stupid attached accelerate attack. Zone. Yeah. And I even what? think, like, and honestly, uh, you know, a po- uh, uh, an up an up point for Guardi is with American List dropping Rashizard uh, from their Mewtwo. Guardian becomes extremely hard for Mewtwo oh, yeah. to deal with. Oh yeah. The, the tag purge, uh, obviously, that sucks. Uh, you can get around that to some degree, but not to all of it because you have catchers. But them removing the Charizard from their deck and not being able to do the three hundred Psychic Charm is. It's pretty hard to deal with, I would say. So and it is. I think that's a one up for Guardian, but no way in hell would I ever think about playing Guardian in American Regional until abilities are at least gets a thirty percent decrease in play. Okay. Because it's I wanna say oh god, forty five percent of forty to forty five percent of Atlantic City would be a Reshizard variant, whether it's greens or ability or even non-GX, I think non-GX Reshi is probably even worse for Guardi. <laughs> like, yeah, to get one shot by a Blown and then one shot by a Turt, I think that's just too much it to do It ain't good. It ain't good. I, and I've unfortunately given up. I've tried four Giant Bombs. I've tried four Power Plants, three Stamp. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's, it's just It just ain't there right now. But in the future, I think it will be. Um, the last thing that I want to touch on, since I, I kind of try to gear all my all my uh, videos toward like some kind of personal development obviously you guys are extremely um extremely accomplished in this game right and it's i know that i've learned tremendously from each of you just from how kind you've been or some advice that you've given me when i was starting out a couple of years ago and what i would like to hear from you is the best piece of advice for a new player in this new season who wants to take their competitive kind of uh, skill and drive up a little bit what would you suggest to add to their what they're already doing um their testing or anything like that one piece of advice that you can give to somebody who really wants to dive in this upcoming season maybe starting next weekend at regionals uh, that they can implement into whatever they're doing already so why don't we start with uh john all right so i used to suffer with this i honestly still do it's just like there's always the next tournament. It's not like you, when you lose, it's not the end of the world. And like, I, I'm uh, this. I've been in masters. This is about to be my third year in masters. I came from seniors where you know it was a lot easier. I was more accustomed to like being at the top, winning. So it was really humbling to be to like to age up into masters, get my ass kicked a little bit, and then just like you know have like a real understanding of what it is. So just like if you lose, it's that's not it. There's always next tournament. You just like gotta keep going. Like last season, my quarter one was absolutely atrocious. I had like no day twos, no nothing. And then when quarter two came around, stuff started to pick up. And then I pulled it out to finish like eleventh in North America last year. So if you just have if you're running through a bad patch, just it's you just gotta like keep making good in game decisions, keep focusing on your play and eventually it'll work out. Great. Okay, cool. How about you, Cody? Um, what I would say to this is what I would say to other people I've talked to about with this in the past, and it's what I would continue to tell people is to not forget that you are playing a game. Um, you are supposed to be having fun when you do things like that. Um, if you have a bad tournament, just take that L and go. Uh, for instance, at the, at the open, 
I played Blissepalon, and I played against uh, a Pika that played two, two, uh, <laughs> Finny. I played against five. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's that I, did happen. I I, I was there. Are, I I I was in games where I couldn't do anything at all. Uh, but I met some cool people. I had a good time. I'm still uh, kind of in contention for top six given my my cups and everything continue to turn out um but even if i don't i'm having fun and i'm playing a game that i i think is fun i think the people are good uh just don't forget that you're playing a game cool cool hunter take us home all right i'll piggyback off both of those uh john what john said you know, they're always tournament uh, pressure and tournament anxiety is a real thing. You're like, I'm spending all this money to be out here, and I lost, so now I feel like, you know what, screw this, I don't want to play anymore. Those feelings run through everybody, so don't feel uh, marginalized. Like, oh well, I feel really bad, and I don't want to go back. Everybody feels that way, so don't feel alone in that fact. And uh, also, what Cod said with the uh, with the <clears throat> it's a game we play to have we play to to have fun. I've been playing since 07, since I was. 10 years old and I played for fun then and now it seems like I'm only playing for money and you got to remember that you know you're playing because you love Pokemon and you love the people and you love to travel and then to take my give my own little advice is that you really put in or you get out what you put in if you (laughs) want to level your game up you got to put the time in you got to take and that doesn't mean that you have to get coached or that you have to play an exponential amount of games or that you have to do all these routines and rituals to get good, you know. But it, do, it does take work to be uh, a Tord or a Stefan or an Igor. They don't just get there by being inherently good. They're there because they have a skill, and they hone that, and they practice on that, and they never give up. They, there's, no, uh, there's no ceiling for those type of guys. Igor's, you know, made finals at two worlds and, and won one of them and top board another and Igor's still playing. So it just shows you that, you know, you, you really get in what you really get what you put in. And so if you, if you give those long hours, you do the meta analysis, you study what's winning and you put in everything, including heart, soul, you eat good, get good night's sleep, all those things comboed together really will give you the results that you want. And anybody can do it. I hate when people are like, Oh, you know, to be good at Pokemon, you have to have this certain type of skill, and then you got to put in all this. It doesn't matter where you come from, or who you are, or or any of that. All that matters is if you are hardworking and you love the game, you will move forward with it. That was great. Um, <clears throat> that was really good from all of you, and uh, this went longer than I wanted it to, and that's amazing because that means that there was so <laughs> much good. So there was so much good information going around, and there was just a lot of piggybacking off of different ideas, and we covered so much. And I think that we were able to really give um, just a really good view of how some of the top players in the game right now view these tournaments, their approach, certain decks, certain matchups, certain techs, things like that. Um, so before we do shout outs, I just wanna <clears throat> I just wanna put a personal note to this whole thing. Uh, I I am a paying member of each site that um, each one of these players represents. I've been on Cutter Tab since the first day that I ever played. Um, I'm supporting the new uh, Rockets Hideout, and six prizes where John is obviously uh, one of the flagship content creation websites. So what I want to give each of my friends here <clears throat> an opportunity to do is shout out their teams, plug their websites that you guys should absolutely check out because <clears throat> it's well worth it, and just celebrate themselves and their friends and their accomplishments for a little bit. Um, so why don't we start with Hunter? So, uh, shout out to Team Cutter Tap, myself, Hale Overnight, uh, Finnegan Lynch, uh, Michael Tobias Perez, our new member, Mike Morton, yeah. uh, Car- Carter Barsh, Joe Sanchez. Uh, I love I love my team. Uh, they're a great group of guys, all got good accomplishments. We really we write about what we play. That's the biggest thing I can say from our, that makes our site just a little, a tad bit different than other sites is. We really are interest. Really are interested uh, in bringing the content that we will be playing at the tournament uh, to you guys. 
Um, and uh, shout out to you having me. I love John. John's my boy. Todd, <laughs> we, we played at Nats, and he bodied me with Night March with a 1 1 guard door. <laughs> <laughs> bodied me out of day two. <laughs> he bodied me too. That's how I met him. <laughs> so, uh, so shout out to for you guys for having me, and uh, hope to see you guys in AC. No, that was it. Was really it was really good having you on, man. You you had so much to say, and um, you're a very friendly guy. You've always been very welcoming to me, and I and I'm sure you would be to anyone. Very much appreciate you, man. Um, John, go ahead. All right. So start out. Shout out to the boys, Team ARG. We got the best group of guys ever. We just added two new players. We, okay, we added one new player, depending Broke on who this, depending on <laughs> this is posted. Yeah. Yeah, we're adding a bunch of people to our team. It's going to be great. The family is growing. Shout out to Six Prizes for bringing me on their writing staff pretty recently at the end of last season. It's been amazing. Uh, shout out to you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for making content, Carl, because this is great for like, other people to be able to have these this many outlets to, like, gain information and get improve their game and get better and then just uh make sure to check out like like they're already going to go through but make sure to check out like you said cutter tap that's like one of the things that i i was up to cover cutter tap for a short period of time when i was in seniors that helped out my game a lot like finn is one of the greatest minds in oh, the yeah. game just the way he thinks is just like oh it, it, it's 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 crazy i can't even begin to describe yes. it check out six prizes they have been one of the biggest names in article writing for the longest time. And check out Rocket's Hideout because it's new, it's hot, it's like a different idea. It's, it's cheap. Yeah, the model is incredible. Yeah, it's it, it's it's brand new. It's what's up right now. So make sure to check them out. Very cheap articles. If you have like one player specific you're looking into and want to just help them out or just get a subscription if you think there's a lot. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, John, definitely thank you for joining me, man. I mean, these these videos never come together uh by me like it always takes a certain like people will reach out to me and i know i got a message from hunter and i got a message from john and i got a message from cody with some enthusiasm about these people wanting to share their information with you for free like that is uh that is unspeakably kind and there's just a lot of experience and years and frustration and success that goes into everything that you get from each all three of these guys and um, the level of selflessness and friendliness, I think, just can't be understated. So, John, I really, I mean, thanks a lot, man. I, I really love having you around here, um, having your support. It, it's super important to me, so thank you. Um, Cody, go ahead and close this out. Uh, I think we've all brought this up, but again, check out the hideout. Um, I personally have asked that my articles come out with no, no cost, so people have the chance to look at them before... They think about buying the other people. Um, I've talked to all the people um, who do content on there, and everyone thinks very differently, but everyone... Um, ...justifies their their thoughts uh, very profoundly. Um, so you can basically uh, look at all the, the, the articles and know that uh, they've all been tested, and thought out and everything like that. Any but any buddy on there uh, is worth looking at. Definitely uh, follow me on Twitter. I post all the decks I play. Um, keep an eye out for the article I have coming out on Sunday. Again, it will not cost anything at all, and I have played both decks a lot. <laughs> Being on. And are you on a team, Cody? Um, just the item. <laughs> okay, great. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so yeah, guys, that's going to be it for the, the AC meta discussion. Um, once again, my name is Carl, newest member of Rare Candy. You can check me out on Twitter at PZPTCG. I stream pretty much every day at twitch.tv slash PZ5. And on, on, obviously you could find me here on Rare Candy doing these player development, meta discussion, interview videos that I love to do so much. Just Try to bring the personalities of the top players in the game to you more than just a, oh, play this, oh, play that. Like, let's learn about each other. Let's befriend each other. Let's just let's just get the information out there. Let's let's get better, right? And um, with the help of these three guys here today, I think we were able to do that. I know I was. Um, so once again, I, I really appreciate all you guys for stopping by. If you want to support Rare Candy a little bit further, we have a Patreon. And we have a merch store that you can find at the links below in the description. Otherwise, best of luck at AC to everyone. Um, 
I'm gonna be there if you see me. Feel free to come up and say hello. I, I and all three of us, all three of my guests are gonna be there too. So come over and say what's up. Um, in the meantime, for Rare Candy, this is Carl. Peace.